Well, hey everybody, uh, Jason here with Mark Twain Lake Fishing Intel. I'm with Dennis Lawrenson. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Sure. Uh, he's the uh, Northeast Missouri Angler YouTube personality. If you haven't checked his channel out, check it out. He's also the guide for catfish here on Mark Twain Lake, and we're just gonna, you know, here we are, first part of March, and he's gonna kind of get in the, all the catfish and stuff uh, going on. We just started that here on the on the Intel. Uh, it's going to be a lot of a lot of good information coming everybody's way on the catfish side. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to him. He's going to we're going to try to get into uh, uh, springtime uh, catfishing. Get ready out. to start in. Uh, Mark Twain is not like some of the lakes down south. Everybody is familiar or heard about how good the catfishing is, especially blue catfishing on Truman and Lake of the Ozarks during the wintertime. Uh, Mark Twain is a little different. It, our fish here go dormant in the winter. Uh, when I say dormant, they do feed, but they only feed to survive. They're not actively feeding like they do down south. 100 miles is huge. We're up north far enough to where our fish pretty much go dormant. You can catch them in the winter, but it's hit and miss, and more often than not, you're going to go out there and you're just going to be wasting time fishing for them. I usually don't start fishing for them until the water temperature surface starts hitting regularly 50 degrees in the morning that's the key is oh. in the morning because i mean even now on a sunny day at 60 degrees outside you might find 48 49 degree water you know in, up in the flats or back in the coves you know in five six foot of water surface thing. but if you go out in the eight ten foot of water and drop the temperature gauge down to the bottom it's probably only still in the in the low to mid 30s, even now. Um, and while blue cats are, you catch the big ones in colder water, ideally, I think the best time is when the water's around 55, 53 to 58 degrees. To really catch bigger blue cats, you have a better chance of it uh, on robbery. Uh, but you gotta let that water warm up. Uh, they will go up in the shallows this time of year, even in the middle of winter, you get a nice warm day, the sun's really beating down. Uh, they're gonna follow bait fish if you feed them. So, and if the shad go up, which is a primary food source on Mark Twain, if them gizzard shad go up into the shallows, the feeding fish will follow. Um, but right now, it's just to me, it's not active enough and not to really go out there to fish it and, and catch it, have a good chance right. of catching a bunch of fish. You know? right. um, and Mark Twain is not a trophy catfish lake by far compared to Truman and whatnot. It is not there, it's like apples and oranges, right. it really is. Uh, so let the water warm up and then I'd say from what I'm seeing in prior years last year it was about the first week of April before you could really go out there and catch fish you know um, but you, I started catching them in the middle of March last year right. so but you go out and you fish for four or five hours and you might catch three you know they would be channel cats or small blues you know right. um, type fish early uh, but it seemed like April is when I start catching, you know, bigger fish and more numbers. Right. Where you go out and fish for six, seven hours, you know, anywhere from five to seven hours, you can catch eight or ten fish, right. you know, and catch, catch a decent bigger fish, you know, a chance of bigger fish. Uh, I think it was May when I caught the one last year, it was 77 times. Oh, wow. You know, um, yeah, I got it on camera, and I'm weighing it, I'm sitting here, and I'm shaking, <laughs> trying to weigh this fish. And I'm like, man, I know it's been a long winter, but I'm not that weak. You know, I'm a right. big guy, you know, right. Right. 33, you know, I'm sitting there holding, oh, it's about 33, 34 pounds and whatnot. I got to look at, after I turned it loose and got home and whatnot, I was editing on the video. I, look, I had my scale in kilograms and everybody was, oh. I posted a picture, everybody was like, you need to buy a new scale. It's right. Right. You know, and I'm <laughs> like, well, when I translated it over, you know, Google, I mean, half kilograms and it was somewhere around seven, over 70, wow. so. And that's the biggest one I'd ever caught after like on rock. Right. I've caught a bigger, you know, uh, on lines. Right. Which, Mark Twain, if you want big catfish, you're setting lines. Set lines. You know, um, I actually, one of the best ways to do it is jug fishing. And uh, when the guy trips, I do offer that as an option if that's what you want to do. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, no, we'll talk about it a little more. Yeah. But springtime, um, usually I like to see that water temp, surface temp, consistently be above 45 okay. before I really start targeting them. Um, 
right now I have been on the water for three weeks, you know that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I unfortunately, my truck motor decided it didn't want to give any more, so it's getting <laughs> rebuilt. Right. And uh, hopefully it gets done today. But uh, put damp, put the damp so I've been things. going with buddies and everything I can to get on the water, you know, and yeah. whatnot, to catch some crappie. But, uh, mm -hmm. but it's coming, I'm guessing here, I'm going to start hunting for them when I get the truck back. Right. I'm going to go ahead and start hunting, try right. to figure out which arm. Usually you can tell pretty quick the areas that are going to be productive, mm -hmm. you know, pretty quick. Uh, last year, you know, it was all about the South Fork and the Middle Fork. Uh, year before, uh, North Fork, Black Creek, and Elk Fork's where it was. Oh, wow. You know, yeah. each year it seems like a different area that lake tends to be a little better than the other. They'll all, I'm a firm believer in the west end of the lake is the best for catfishing. Uh, Lick Creek has silted in so bad. It used to be, I fished Lick Creek a lot, especially at the boat ramp, Wheeling boat ramp right outside of Perry, mm -hmm. there on the bridge. Yep. Uh, it used to be, you could go there and just hammer fish. And pretty much all fall, it was almost dry there now, with the water as low as it was this, right. this last summer and fall and through the winter. Uh, the lakes went up here, here the last couple of weeks, and I know you, I could get my boat in there now, right. but it's six foot higher than it was. So, and you got to give them fish. When we get these spring rains, the fish will move up in there in the spring. Unlike some of the other species, like crappie and are starting to go back in the creeks and whatnot, start making their move back. Catfish, it takes them a little longer because in the wintertime, they'll come out of the backs of the creeks and go towards that main body because right. they don't want to be in a deeper water where the temperature's more stable throughout winter. And, uh, but as you start getting these spring rains and the warmer water's running into the lake, and that's a huge factor in when the bite really starts turning on. Uh, they'll go up in the creeks. Now, I've, I've caught them as far up in Black Creek as all the way up almost to uh, south of Kirksville. Oh. Uh, I can't remember the little town's name now. But it's literally, you gotta walk hole to hole to hole. But when the water runs in, them fish go straight up in creeks. And they go up in creeks a long ways. Mm -hmm. And I've caught some big fish that I know couldn't have got to 36 Highway. Here at the bridge, it's right there at the bridge, there's a boat ramp. Right. And you can only go about three quarters of a mile one way and about a mile the other way, and it's gravel bars and whatnot. And even then, it's only about four foot deep the whole time. Mm -hmm. But I've caught some massive fish in there that I know the only reason they got up in there is because they had to swim up when the water was Right. And like any fish, the, water, the new water's coming in, it's warmer. Mm -hmm. It's got all the leaves and grubs and worms and bugs and Lord knows what else yeah. washing down in there. They're going to come into that warmer water. It gives them the ability to be more active and they're going to start feeding. Mm -hmm. And then that warmer water, the big rains that come in, 70 degrees outside, we get two or three inches of rain. It brings that lake temp up right. quick, you know. Right. And then so, so all, as always, you know, the main body is one of the last things to get warm. Right. You know, well, Lick Creek is a short arm. It's not very long. Um, it has a pretty good drainage basin to it, but it seems like it doesn't warm up as fast as the West End does. That West End, your major, you know, your South Fork and Long Branch all come in to the South Fork arm, what people call South Fork arm. Right. All the way in the back, it splits the Long Branch arm and South Fork come together. So around the Santa Fe area, that's one branch, and then west of that is another branch, and it all converges in the South Fork. And then you got Middle Fork, which comes up around Paris, comes all the way over almost to Madison Court, right. in on Middle Fork, and it receives a lot of run in. So it's going to warm up usually pretty quickly. Yeah. A lot of water comes in Middle Fork. Middle Fork is extremely shallow, and also if you fish it early, make sure you check regulations there because Middle Fork is where a waterfowl refuge is on the lake and part of that is shut off uh, until the spring, until later on in the spring. So it can't get all the way back in there. Right. Um, good idea there. Yeah. yeah. Another good place early when water's running in is the Elk Fork Bridge. Right there at Elk Fork yeah, Bridge right between there. Paris and Perry. Yep. Even if the waterfowl region's closed, the waterfowl starts the bridge and goes towards the lake. So you can fish from the bridge upstream. And, that, and there's a boat ramp there, and it's, you can put whatever size boat you want in there. Right. Um, now when the water gets up about 612, it gets hard to launch a boat. You're going to need a four-wheel drive, you need 
wash off the gravel part. Uh, but there is a boat ramp there, it is concrete. Um, like I said, once it gets up about 611, you're not going to be able to use it. Right. And it's a very steep boat ramp. I mean, your truck won't even be close to the water line if your boat's like this. Right. right. But you can put a boat in there, and it does have some pretty good fish in there at times. And you can even fish that from the bank if you're a bank fisherman. It's right. a good place to bank fish. Right. You know, uh, you either walk over underneath the bridge, there's a whole water there. Uh, you can fish right there off the side. It's basically an old highway road, I think, is what it is on gravel road. And put concrete on it and boat ramp. Right. And you can fish off this side of it. Just keep that in mind. Somebody brings a boat down there, just get out of the way. Right. You know, if you got lines out, just reel them in. You know, you are close to the boat ramp, but it is a secondary ramp. Right. So it isn't like Spalding or Ray right. you know, Russell, really, really to really where really you want to be away from that boat ramp, or if they come down there, they will run you off. Right. They can't take you for it, close to the major ramps. Um, but on the secondary ramps, they, it's fine. You can fish right around them. Just don't be is the big thing. Yeah. But, uh, and then about May, towards the middle end of May, the flatheads are going to start turning on. Uh, most of the flatheads you catch are going to be on lines. Um, the lake has flathead in it, but the population has taken such a hammer over the last 20, 25 years. To go out there and actually fish for them with rod and reel is hit and miss, even during the peaks. And of course, the flatheads, you want to use live bait on Mark Twain. Uh, it's not a river system. So I know when they did the study here to determine what they want to do with the link law changes they made last year, where blues and flatheads do have to be 26 inches to keep them. Channel cave you keep any size, but blues and flatheads do have to be at least 26 inches to keep them. Uh, that was put into effect last year. When they yep. did that study, how they did that, they set lines, but they used cut shad. And they didn't catch enough flatheads to get an idea of the populations. Okay. And the reason being is Mark Twain, it's not like Truman, Lake of the Ozarks. Down south, the Tennessee River system has Lake Wiley, Loudon, Sandy Cooper Lakes, all them. They're a river system that is dammed up between dams. And it's always got water. And you'll catch a lot of flathead in that situation, just like on rivers. You can catch them on company because you've got the current that's moving the bait around the water. Mark Twain, it's pretty much stagnant. So if you use cut bait, it's just laying there and flathead like black bait. So you're going to have to use gold for less time. Some people buy goldfish. You know, me, I have access to the ponds and whatnot, creeks, I can catch some bluegill. Right. You know, um, and I use that. Keep in mind, Missouri, you're not supposed to use anything over, I believe it's five inches in length, or six inches in length, really. So you can use a pretty good size bluegill. Oh, yeah. You know, now goldfish, I think you can use pretty much any size of bluegill. Good. Um, that's good information. I didn't realize Missouri, that. you cannot use any game fish, anything that's labeled as a game fish. So you cannot use crappie or any part of a crappie. You can't use bass or any part of a bass. You can use bullheads in Missouri, oh, okay. but they still follow underneath that. They got to be five, inch five mm -hmm. or six inches. I do believe it's five. I don't use anything over about five inches. Right. But and I mean, I would say you can't use them, but you got to kill them. Right. You, know, you got to cut in half. But uh, bullheads, a lot of guys use like bullheads for flathead. You know, flathead do not like bullheads at all they get in the nest and skin the eggs. Uh, and I've used them on lines and they work. I like them. I use bullheads, I like them about that long. Yeah. About four and a half, five inches. And I cut the side fins and the dorsal fin off of the top of the, the sharp fins. I right. cut them off. Now, I've heard arguments that don't matter one way or the other. But to me, I mean, anybody that's fish knows you know, get a bite, you know, feel that hook, and then just quit biting, you know. But at the same time, it's a live fish. They eat them in, they eat them in the wild, so they're used to the fins. Right. But it just makes it to me out it's a little easier. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't use them very much. I've used them here and there when I couldn't get anything else. Right. Uh, Perry City lets plump full of them. You go there with a night, with a night crawler, yeah. buy a dozen night crawlers, and you can sit out there with a little cheap whatever, almost yeah. stick of them. Line, line and catch bullheads like this just one after the other. Right. But uh, yeah. then I couldn't get any other bait I'd use in case right. in the past. But for the most part, if we're using live bait on a guy trip, it's going to be bluegills. Mm -hmm. uh, I think bluegills are the best live bait on the lake. Mm -hmm. You catch blues and flatheads consistently on bluegills. Right. Goldfish, I just never had much luck with them. I've probably spent thousands of dollars on goldfish over the years. <laughs> And it, bluegill just seems to outfish it. Right. Uh, I think it's just, 
I'm also a believer in if it isn't in the water, don't use it. Right. Yeah. Meaning Mark Twain doesn't have skipjack in it. Yeah, so don't use skipjack. So don't use skipjack. I've tried it. Yeah. Turtles eat it before the fish. Right. You know, but I've said this too. I use chicken breast from time to time. You told me that last year. And I and last year I started using some beef spleen. Worked really good. Yeah. And uh, I've never seen a chicken swimming out there, but they'll eat it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go figure. But I think it. I think it has something to do with the chicken thing. I think it has to do with mussels. Because blue cats love mussels. I mean, uh, Mark Twain has mussels in it, uh, and snails and whatnot. Blue cat eat the whole thing and then they basically poop off the shell. Right. And I think it has to do with that. Something, the enzyme or something reminds them of that. Mm -hmm. And that's why, I mean, when we were kids at Perry Lake, we yep. would get them mussels. Yep and dig that meat out because we couldn't afford no bait. We were right. just kids. Yeah, exactly. And we used the meat out of the mussels and catch a yep. catfish yep. out of that lake. Yep. You know, so I think it has something to do with that. Right. You know? right. But, but yeah, and then you know, and the fishing's going to be real good, usually until first week of June, end of the first week of June, and then they're going to start, the blues and flatheads are going to start going under when that water temperature gets right for them. Mm -hmm. The old adage is if the wheat's turning, the fish are under. If the wheel, once the wheat starts turning, the fish start going under. Oh, okay. Uh, and then you can go out there and catch a channel cat, even during the spawn, but it really drops off for blues and flatheads. Right. It does. And that'll last usually until the first or second week of July. And then when them fish come off the spawn, it is a frenzy out there. Really? Yes. I think the best time for catfishing on Mark Twain, honestly, is after the spawn. And when it gets just hotter than daylight in fishing. Uh, there's no sense in going out there before seven o'clock once it gets hot. And watch your thermal climb later. And this is the old adage. You always heard grandpa and the old guys talk, you know, oh find the deepest hole you can and throw yeah. it in there, you'll catch it. No, it's not true. That's an old why. That's an old man's tale. Yeah. You're not gonna find them in the deepest hole in the winter. Yeah, maybe. But the biggest fish I've caught have all come out of under five foot water. That one I caught last year, that big one, it was in about three and a half foot water. Mm. He hit. I didn't see the rod. I heard the splash. No. And looked up and seen his tail coming out of the water, splashing it was so shallow. Wow. You know. It. Uh, I'd say the biggest fish, most fish I catch, most of them we caught last year was caught under two foot of water also mm. from July. Right. It was ridiculous. We look back and you hear them splash and you see the rods go. It was just crazy. Right. But uh, we caught some of them. There was one night we were fishing at 0.7 foot of water catching. Wow. Unbelievable. You know, it wasn't even a foot deep. Right. It was crazy. Mm. But, uh, and that's on the sonar, you know, so it's right. under the water about this far. So right. it was probably a foot and a half. Yeah. Right. But they get night and that warm water they cruise up on the flats at night out on these mud flats feet and chase bait fish. Mm -hmm. So during the day the bait fish will hide. You know, the bigger you know, the ones they're after they're like you still hide. Mm -hmm. But at night they all come out. Right. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Dra I do dragging and anchor fishing. Springtime I do more anchor fishing than dragging. Mm -hmm. um, but once that off spawn that water warms up and you go out there at night and drag baits it is the funnest thing you've never done it until you you're missing out. Because you only catch active fish. You don't get the peck, 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 peck. Because the fish you're catching, they're actively feeding. And when they hit rods, they slam them. You know, I mean, it's a bury rod, it's strip drag, it's crazy. Mm. But, uh, and, it, and it, that'll go on about two, three weeks after the spawn's ended. It's just a feeding frenzy. You didn't, You'll go out and catch 20, 30 fish. You know, yeah. if, you want, if you want to go out and fish from 8 and fish all night till morning, you catch 30, 40 fish. You know, you catch a fish every 5, 10 minutes usually. You know, so sometimes, you know, it depends on what size you're targeting too. Right. You know, if you want to go out and just catch big fish, you might catch one an hour. You know, if you're lucky. Uh, on my trips, I try to make it to where we got a chance of catching big ones, but we want to catch fish too. Right. You know. And I had a couple trips where they wanted to only catch big fish. I'm like, well, if you want to really have the best chance of catching a big one, we need to throw some jugs. You know. And how I do those jug trips is we take the jugs out, we take them out, we throw them out, and then we pull them to the bank, 
or drag, depending on what, whatever works best that area at the time, or find a collector. And we set for a couple hours and then we'll run through them, check them, take fish off, whatnot, okay. and then pull back up. And then usually do it again after two hours and then we pick them up. Uh, my guide trips I run are six to eight hour trips. Keep okay. that in mind. Uh, I don't do four hour trips, short trips. And the main reason is you, there was some trips we went out for the first three hours, we only caught one fish. And in the last three, they really turned on and caught all fish. Right. You know, uh, most fish you, we're going to catch are in that three to seven pound range. That's just what's in Mark Twain right now. Uh, a lot of trips last year, we caught a lot of blue cat that were 24 to 25 and a half inches. You have to throw them back. We can't keep them. Right. Uh, when the fishing is right, I had a couple times we went down below the dam on the salt water instead of up on them. Right. Now, fish down there, you can keep, they don't have to be 26 inches down there, okay. just up in the lake. Um, the only thing is, if we fish down there, we usually bring fish back here to my shop and we dress them after we're done because we, if you go up to like Ray Barron's to use their cleaning station, once you get up in that parking lot and you're cleaning fish and conservation comes up there, and I asked Jessica about this, this is why I know. Right. Uh, they don't know where you caught those fish. Just like if you were put in, say, at, at Stoutsville, and you go up past the bridge. Well, then you're in Black Creek, you're no longer in the lake. You keep them shorter if you're wet. But when you pull out of the water, they don't know where you caught them. Right. You know, so anytime I put in where it's legal, we don't clean them anywhere around the lake because they don't know where we caught them. Right. You know, and it's not that they don't believe that that's where we caught them. They can't prove we didn't. I can't prove I didn't. Right. Don't put them in that situation. Don't put yourself right. in that situation. Yeah, that you know. great sense. There's no sense in doing it. Right. No, not at all. You know, so so we usually bring them back here and dress them. Right. Uh, if we go below the dam. Uh, and I mean, we had two trips. Went below the dam. One time we caught 14. Mm -hmm. They're both jug trips. Uh, we had one 37 pounder blue right. cat. Uh, the other time we had, we had 12 or 13. No monsters, we had one about 20 pounds, blue cat, mm -hmm. and a few flatheads and channels. You usually get a mixed bag down there. Right. You know, to where up on the lake, you're pretty much going to catch channel cat and blue cat. But down below the dam, you, you catch some flatheads on jugs. You get a mixed bag down there, it seems like. Uh, the fish most generally average a little bit smaller below the dam, but you do catch more common, catch two or three in the teens mm -hmm. on jugs. Where on the lake, you're either going to catch them or you're not. They're either going to be smaller, meaning you know, 20, 24 inches, right. or they're going to be a couple of teeners, or you can get some 30s, right. you know, or bigger, um, as far as that goes. And definitely, if you want a chance to get a flat hit, you want to jump, you want to run the right. you want to run some jugs. Uh, you have to stay with them, which is fine. Uh, the jugs I use, I use pool noodles, I make them. Pool noodles, PVC pipe, I'll put reflector tape on them yeah. and aluminum tape. If that's something you want to do, I just get your conservation number beforehand and I get them on the jugs for you and then we take them out, pretty much show you how to do it and then help me get them out, you know, maybe you bait and throw, I'll just drive the boat, whatever you want to do. Right. And and then when it comes time to pick up, everybody helps pick up, and wrap them up, count them, make sure we got them all before we leave. But it's, it's like it's six to eight full hours on the water. Okay. Which means we meet the boat ramp. If it's a, I do morning and night trips. Uh, I'm, for catfish in the summer, I prefer night. It's usually a better bite. Uh, and the reason being is the thermal climb the way it is. Last summer, thermal climb all the way back we was fishing South Fork. Thermal climb's a six foot. So you're not going. You don't want to fish over about eight foot deep. You know, and that's why those fish are so shallow. They're just easier to find, easier to catch. Right. They're feeding more, whatnot. Um, in the spring, if we're going to get a big rain. You know, if we get a big rain, that 24 to 36 hour period after that rain, that water's running in, yeah. is the best time to catch fish this lake. You get in that running water, and then fish just gorge. And you can just sit there and one after the other, after the other, after the other, until you get tired of it. Now, after a 36 hour range, it's usually about five or six days before the fish are going to feed again. They did, they're gorged, they did, they're full, they don't want to eat. You know, your channel cat will just gorge. You won't, it's hard to catch a channel cat after a rain, after about the second day. Right. 
you know, they just go and check and catch blues. The problem is there just ain't enough blues, legal blues yet in the lake. Right. You know, I'd say it's going to be about another three or four years before that you really notice an increase in numbers mm -hmm. of legal blues. Right. Because there's a ton of juvenile blue catfish in our lake right now, in the 20 to 25 inch range. You know, and that's what we normally would keep. Right. You know, so we got a lot of good bigger. So this all will be the second year. So that, a lot of the fish we threw back there was 25, 25 and a half last year. They're going to be legal this year. Legal this year. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and then of course it, the fall will come. Usually it's about the end of August. It really, sometime in August, it'll start tapering down. When the water really starts dropping the temperature, mm -hmm. the catfish here react totally different than a lot of other down south. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll really start tapering. The channel cat will actually turn on a little bit. Oh, really? Yeah, they'll actually start biting and catching crappie fishing. You'll notice summertime you catch one here or there, but once that water starts getting back going down, gets into the 60s and 50s, you'll catch a lot of them channel cat crappie fishing. And they're putting the channel cat feet in full weight. The blue cat just, I mean, the flathead will just fall right off. You just won't catch them. Mm -hmm. And then the blue cat will start tapering off. And I think it's they're made, they're worried that they're getting to their winter spots. They're on their transition phase. Blue cat move. They're nomads. You may catch, you know, from the tag data, they tag one over here in Lake Creek, and two months later, that's caught all the way up in the North Fork. Fish swam for 15 miles, you know, in two right. months. Uh, they're trying to figure out where they're going to go for the winter. They're making a transition. It just makes them hard to catch. Uh, that's when you look at the channel edges, drop offs, whatnot. Then when winter gets here, you look for timber. Like that timber brush piles, what now they need water for. Right. Um, but yeah, as far as guide trips go, like I said, I minor six or eight hours on the water. Which, the morning trips, I usually start about 6 a.m. when we fish till noon. Uh, usually we'll, at noon, we'll head back. If it's a little slower, we may stay out a little longer. Right. Temperature's not bad. Everybody's having, you know, not bad. we're not getting miserable. Right. You know, because it's hot or sunburn or whatnot. Uh, we may stay out a little longer. Uh, and then we go in. And then after that, we'll go with dress fish. I'll dress the fish for you, I'll bag them up, label them, you know, however we need to do it. And then that's the trip. Uh, the types of trips, methods, uh, I only do myself, rod and reel, and jokes. Okay. Uh, rod and reel is the main thing uh, right. I do, but I love running jokes too. It's, right. it's a lot of fun. Uh, Jug fishing, uh, we usually use live bait or shad, cut shad. Uh, rod and reel, we'd probably be using, you know, cut shad, chicken, whatever's working. Mm -hmm. uh, even drug stick bait at times, right. you know. Uh, so whatever method's working. Uh, we'll either be anchored up, nosed into the bank, or dragon baits, right. uh, whatever's working at the time. Whatever you want to do, too. Right. Um, if it doesn't really matter, if we're catching them either direction, we'll learn how to do something, we're going to do it. Right. You know, just to show you. Right. Um, got your rod you got a few rods the here. The rod, mainly the rods I use are the I started using BM Silver Cats and I love them. The Silver Cat Elite Rod. I do paint the rods. The reason I come up paint them is just so they're more visible in the dark and even in the daylight. If you got rods sticking up there, and sometimes they'll blend in with the clouds and the sun and whatnot. You know, it's so I paint them different colors. I guess one's just orange, this one's got orange and green. Whatnot, and it makes it easier too. Instead of you know, I say green, you know that one there. Or whatnot, yeah, you know, yeah. When you're talking about it, and also my rod holders are all numbered on the boat. But anyway, the medium silver cane elites, uh, the medium heavies, uh, and the reels I use is the Cast Kings uh, Rovers. They're basically an Abbey Garcia clone, mm -hmm. is what these are. Uh, they're just not two hundred dollars a piece. They're sixty dollars a piece. They're affordable. The rods are affordable. That way, if you come and use them and you like them, you don't have to. Catfishing is just like bass fishing. You can get crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're if you're crazy. looking at, I mean, all the rods will catch fish. I do recommend if you are going to buy a catfish rod, make sure it's got a metal reel seat and a longer handle. And the reason being is you get, especially, and this is not trying to be discriminative, but women aren't as strong as men. Right. On most generally. And like my wife, if it don't have this long handle, she can't hardly use it. 
is you get one about five or six pounds and you're trying to hold on to it, you know, you can tuck this in and do this. Or even, she even puts it between her legs sometimes and holds, you know, lets the, lets the rod leaves us hand straight, mm -hmm. you know. But that metal reel seat's important because it, it's just the plastic ones that get brittle over time, they'll break. But this rod's only $69 to where your other popular brands are Hellcats. Everybody's heard of Hellcats. The newest one's Mad Cats and Hellcats and Slime Cats. There's all kinds of cats. Yeah, but, uh, you know, some of them, they start at, you know, $70 up to, I think the, light, the newest uh, Hellcat rod is like $119, wow. you know. And these are good blank. They got enough backbone in them, but they got a soft enough tip to work well with a circle hook uh, to set the hook. They have stainless steel eyelets that are heavy duty. And this whole combo, I've got less than $150 in it. You know, or an Abby Garcia catfish reel, catfish special reel, they're $169, $160, $180, depending on where you get them. Or $260, turn. Right. Yeah, you're going to have $400 in one rock. Well, yeah, exactly. Where I could do this, and it's a good option. If you go, you like it, you want to buy it. Yeah. Here's a good like setup. Break the bank, right? You're not going to break the bank. And, exactly. and I mean, I'll bait cast out rods or whatnot. I don't expect you all to do that because some people can't cast them. Right. And you know, can't cast bait casters because they've never used them. Mm -hmm. uh, another reel that I u do use is the PC Fun Chaos. Uh, it's a very good reel. Um, it's got a power handle on it. And some people like power handles, some people don't. I'm telling you now, you get a fish about 25, 30 pounds, you're always getting a power handle. Right. Or just a little crank thing. <laughs> um, and the, the only, the, these reels, they're again, they're 69 bucks. Yeah. You know, they're affordable. Exactly. And there's nothing wrong with them. Right. Uh, the Cast King, the, if you ever have one break, Abu Garcia parts are interchangeable with it. Oh. You know, wow. so you can buy parts for those even. Right. Uh, but if you don't like them or can't use them, we I have some of these too. Yeah. I have them. This is a fairly decent size. It's a good size for channels and 20 pounders or so. I've got some over there. Some big yellow ones are heavy action. The reels on them are about that big around. They're actually what I use on the Mississippi when I put pound baits on trying right. to catch a monster. I'll use them instead of the bait cast reels. Okay. They hold more line and cast further usually. Right. And they're just the heaviest rods I have. Mm -hmm. but, but they'll all catch fish. Right. I mean, you don't think you need high dollar equipment to go out and catch fish. That's right. the number one thing is they see this person and they got all the rods are the same. And they're all these high dollar rods, all these high dollar reels. You yeah. don't have to have it. There's been more fish. Right here, this whole setup is 50 bucks. <laughs> it's an Eagle Claw rod and an 808. Yeah. More big fish have been caught on this 808, I guarantee you, in the history of fishing, than it's ever been caught on them high dollar reels. Right. It just, it's, it's what everybody's grandpa had. That's what we always used to have. They used them bow fishing. Yeah, we, we used to use 202s all the time. They used these bow fishing, they put that big cord on there yeah. and shoot that big two five yep. six hundred pound alligator guard stuff yep. with them and reel them things in yep. you know it's just creature comforts that these have smoother drag they're a little more they're just right. smoother they cast further you know right. it, it, it's all it is is creature comforts that rod has a plastic reel seat you know? right so it's just these are stronger is right. what it is but you don't have to have high dollar equipment right, right. When you provide all the rods, I'll I have all the equipment. I provide all the equipment, all bait. The only thing you have to bring is yourself, of course, and a current Missouri fishing license. Uh, weather appropriate clothing. Uh, keep in mind, it may be 90 degrees when we leave in sunshine, but once that sun goes down and that dew starts falling and you start getting damp, you're probably going to want something to put on over top of a pair of shorts and a tank top. Uh, and whatever drinks and snacks you want. Now, unfortunately, I have to say this. I hate that you have to, but no alcohol and no marijuana. Right. Uh, I know it's both legal in the state of Missouri, but my insurance company does not care. Right. It's an insurance thing. Also, I don't take anybody under the age of 13. Gotcha. And anybody under the age of 16 has to have a life jacket on before they get in my boat. 
and they have to bring a life jacket. I do not have a kid's life jacket. If they're an adult-sized kid, I have a life jacket that can fit. Right. But if they're a small frame, then you need to make sure you bring a life jacket for them. And it does have to be Coast Guard approved. Okay. Uh, I have life jackets, both big ones, and I also have the inflatables. If you fall in, they inflate. Right. If we can wear, because when the boat's moving, we really we have to wear it when the boat's moving. Right. Now, once we adults, once we pull up and we're anchored or whatnot, uh, the big motor's not running. If you use a trolling motor, uh, it's not required in Missouri that you have to wear a life jacket. My insurance doesn't require it either. Right. Um, it's a good idea. Yeah. You know, I've had people, some want to wear it, some don't. Yeah. You know, um, but it is a good idea. And I have, like I said, the ones that inflate if you fall in. Yeah. So I have those so you're not smothered and feel around. Right. But if you have a life jacket that you like, bring it. You right. know, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Uh, and then I usually get there a little bit early, get, make sure we got bait and whatnot ahead of time. And I'll get there and put the boat in early to show up. I'll meet you at the boat ramp we're going to leave from, and uh, which is usually the closest boat ramp to the area we're going to fish. Mm -hmm. And then you'll just basically walk down and get the boat. Right. You know, and then we'll take off, do what we're going to do. When the time comes to leave, we either pick the jugs up or whatnot. Uh, say it's a summertime trip at night. We leave about, we meet the boat ramp at, you know, 8 o'clock. We'll start, get there a couple minutes early. Uh, we'll go out, and then usually about midnight, we'll start picking stuff. Midnight, 12.30, somewhere in there, we'll start running like that last run through the jugs. Right. Start picking them up, and what not that way, we're back to the boat ramp. Sure. You know, at, at about 8 hours. Right. Or something. And, uh, depending on how many fish there is, you know, you got an hour, hour and a half, or we'll be safe. Fish. Fish, yeah. yeah, so yep. keep that in mind. Yep. Um, it's a good idea if it is a night trip. If you can take a nap during the day, <laughs> yeah, because I mean, it, it, uh, you're gonna be up a while, yeah, you know, and I don't want anybody to have a wreck or anything fall asleep. Yeah. Especially if they're coming from two hours away or wherever. A lot of times, people are staying up here, right. is what I found, and it isn't too bad, right? Um, but yeah, it can be, you know, I had something from Quincy, they drove back to Quincy at right. 3 30 in the morning. Right. He's like, man, I should turn out. Right. You know, right. I was kind of worried about it when you drive, and I don't want to wake up. Right. Right. So, morning trips, it's the same deal. Uh, morning time, pretty much going to be rod and reel. We can do some jugs. You can't catch them during the daytime. You just got to fish a little deeper. Right. Um, and same deal. As long as it's windy, we can do it. If it's windy, we don't want to mess with jugs because you're just going to chase them. You spend your whole day running around trying to keep them and stuff and out of the bank. It's just too much of a hassle there if it's going right. to be all the run. So, so how, would they, how would they get a hold of you? They, they get a hold of me either here. either through Facebook at any Missouri Angler on Facebook, uh, and all my information's on there. Um, or they can also give me a call at 573-795-0696. Um, if I do not answer, leave a message. And my, I also have a carpet cleaning business, so the message will say, with Kearns Carpet Cleaning and Northeast Missouri Angler Guide Service. Just keep in mind, if you just hear Kearns Carpet Cleaning, like you called the wrong number, you did that's me too. <laughs> so, uh, and you can leave a message if I don't answer, and I'll get back with you as soon as I can. Uh, most people get a hold of me on Facebook, so in some fashion. Right. But, yeah. Well, cool. Right, that's, that's pretty good information there. Uh, you got anything else you want to touch on? I think I covered that. Yeah, that's so, cool. Yeah, yeah. So, it, Good information, so anybody here coming to Mark Twain Lake, uh, looking to book a catfishing guide, get a hold of Dennis Lawrenson, Northeast Missouri Angler Guide Service, and uh, get a hold of him, he'll get you taken care of on the water. Also, if you have any questions, you know, I can answer questions as far as what to expect, you know, with them. And if you call me and the fish aren't biting, I'm gonna tell you they're not biting. Right. I'm not gonna take you, I don't want, I had somebody call, uh, I had one trip I took them, uh, they called and said, Hey, you know, we want to, you know, where I said we want to go this weekend. And I'm like, we just had a big rain and fish just got done feeding. Okay. I actually made a video. I took my wife, all my YouTube channels, the video where I had my wife we'll catch her one after the other. Right. It was like the next day they wanted to go. And I already had one booked and they canceled. And I was like, thank goodness, because I was worried about getting them on the getting them on fish. Right. Yeah. You know, because I knew they weren't going to, the channels weren't going to feed at all. And, when they canceled, I'm like, ooh, that's a relief, you know. Yeah. And then, what, two hours after they canceled, these people called. And I just told them up front, if you want to really go, I'll take you. But I'm telling you, we may not catch anything you can 
feet. Right. I think we'll catch some blue cats, but you know, yeah. out of ten blue cats, you're going to catch one you can keep right now. Right. Yeah. You know, and we may be may not catch any keepers. Right. You know, yeah. and we ended up catching one keepable channel cat that was 28 inches long, and the rest of them were blue cats we couldn't keep them. We were caught like ten fish, but right. we just couldn't keep the blue cats. And I have right. one fish, and you know, I have some fish. You know, and I'm like. You, you, you know, take, I'm going to give you some fish. Yeah, you, you know. take fish on. Yeah, from where I've been, you know. So I give them some fish the next day we met up. Right. Gave them some fish because I have another trip the next night. Right. But and it's amazing just that 24 hour period the next night we caught fish. Right. Yeah, you know, but I just knew to just quit feeding. Yeah. Because I went out that day to see if the fish were feeding still in blue water. And a buddy of me sat out there for four hours and they were going to go. Oh. You know, and then the next day they wanted that night they wanted to go. And so right. I said, Right. You know, so, and I'll tell you whether or not I'm on Right. You know. Absolutely. You know, honesty's good, you know. Yeah. You know, I mean, most guys around. More important for me to for you like have a good time right. to catch yeah. some fish than it is to, I always catch the big ones. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I can tell you right now, I, I catch some big fish, but if you're not catching fish, you're going to put time on the water. Right. You really are. Right. you got to put time on the water. Yeah. And Mark Twain isn't a trophy lady. So the chances of catching a big one are there, but they're just not as great as the guys you see down St. Louis south of Mississippi. They, right. They catch 20 pounders like we catch threes mm -hmm. up here. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. They got bigger, more fish, and they're bigger than right. because of the gross season. Right. Well, there you have it. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed this video. I want to thank Dennis for joining me today. Uh, like I said, get a hold of me. Northeast Missouri Angler Guide Service on uh, Facebook. Uh, give him a call on his phone number he just listed and uh, we got we're gonna have more to come he's gonna probably give us some detailed fishing reports as he gets out there on the water uh, as the catfish start start uh, biting pretty heavy here at Mark Twain Lake so thanks again for watching Mark Twain Lake Fishing Intel we'll see everybody on the next one